what's up, peoples? Uh, it's your boy, Mr. Rob Atchison, coming at you. Uh, the title of the piece I'm going to do for you today is called Daddy's Little Girls. Marcus got off of the couch and set out my head to the store. It's late in the a.m., about a quarter to four. His little girl's up. She want to play some more. He says, I'll be right back, babe, as he walks out the door. So Sheila waits at the window looking for her father. But after several days, she concludes, why do I bother? She looks to her mother and says, mommy, where's daddy? Does he not love me? Does he regret that he had me? Her mother replied, baby, Papa was a rolling stone. And one day, Papa rolled away and just never came home. It's not that he doesn't love you. It's just he never loved me. So he chose to walk away from his family. So eventually, Sheila stopped watching the window. She stopped doing a lot of things like playing princess, Barbies, Nintendo. She had a hole in her heart that only daddy could fill. So as she got older, she began looking for daddy and man, hoping to heal. She began looking for love in all the wrong places, hoping it's real, almost an adult. Yeah, Sheila's still that little girl trapped at the windowsill. She eventually ends up with Rashad, who's a womanizer just like her father. A wolf who preys on the weak and manipulates our daughters. You see, Rashad don't love Sheila, but Rashad proceeds to holler. Because when Rashad sees Sheila, Rashad sees dollars. So he spilled a little game, got into her head, told her the way out of the hood lies between her legs. So Sheila laid back slow, numb, dang near dead for the first time in her life in a stranger's bed. She gave up the gift she was to keep until the day she wed. Rashad told her one guy, but ten guys came instead. Sheila was a virgin, so for days she bled. But as she recovered, Rashad made sure he said, I love you, beautiful, until it stayed in her head. Now, Sheila fronted for her friends like she was just so happy. But anyone with good sense can see her life was crappy. Because behind closed doors, shorty falling apart. Because she really loved dude with all of her heart. And every time she tried to leave, she just follow her heart. And the leader back to dude and he keep playing the part. Now he don't really care about it. He just running his game. Sad thing she care about him. Want to rekindle the flame. Now both people mold is not one and the same. See she thinks she found love so she stick with the pain. Now they've been dating for a year and she's still turning them tricks. Until one day her stomach hurt. It's like she feeling the kick. So she grabs her a test. Pees on the strip. Waits for a minute and can't believe what she sees on the stick. Two lines positive, now she gotta think quick. Cause if Rashad find out, he ain't gonna let her keep it. So she decides to herself, I, I just keep it a secret. Suddenly Rashad burst in the door like, babe, get ready. Got a big fish on the line and his pockets is heavy. She says, I'm not feeling good, daddy. Can't you send diamond or pearl? Rashad smirks and says, you know only the best for the best. I give him daddy's girl. Besides, this is the last time and I'm done with this world. Sheila says, okay, and they head to a motel. He gives her a kiss on her cheek and he tells her to go sail. She ends up in a room with a dude who's deep in his 40s. He rubbing cocaine on his gun while he looking at shorty. He said, hey, young girl, going to give it a taste. Then he slid in close, put his hands on her waist, looked her up and down instead of dead in the face. And he quickly looked away like he was surveying the place. She says, I, I, I noticed my sound strange. But I recognize the innocence in your eyes. I know that's a birthmark on your shoulder and how you got that scar on your thighs. We were playing tag and you fell when you were five. Then Sheila said, Daddy. And she started to cry. And then she fell back slow as she burst into tears because she finally found a father after all of these years. And then she got mad. Why the hell weren't you here? The Rashad moved in, but she pushed him away. As she turned to the window looking for words to say. Daddy, you said that you were coming back. And I believed you. What? You didn't think that I would one day, someday need you? You can cut me right now and I swear to God that I'd bleed you. Mommy said that you were gone, but Daddy, I still believed you. With every word that she spoke, it pierced straight through his heart. You see, he tried to stand tall, but he falling apart. Because the word had weight that pierced like darts. He says, I know, I haven't been a father, but please allow me to start. And on that day, he realized his actions were wrong. As he extended his hand to his little girl and said, let's go home. Now, this is a wake-up call to all of you men. She needs you to speak life and be there when you can. She needs you to set the bar for what it means to be men. She needs you to affirm her worth or just hold her hand. We have a society that needs fathers out here taking a stand. We have a society that needs fathers not afraid to be men. Because little girl need daddies. 
in their world. So could you please stop neglecting daddy's little girls? Thank you.